one past the return address. So the entry sequence, uh, I'm trying to be aware of where that camera is. The entry sequence for a function often begins with push Q RBP, move Q RBP, RSP, excuse me, RBP. Right? So I'm, I'm using this as, a, as an opportunity not only to answer your question, but also to like nail on a couple of other concepts. Why do we push Q RBP? What kind of register is RBP? Is call E save. Yes, thank you. You're going to do great. Okay, so, so we need to save it at the beginning and we need to restore it at the end. Okay? So F's RBP points here. It points at the saved RBP and just before the return address of F. Okay? So you know a relationship between RSP and RBP, yes, Max? Which side is the lower? Oh, sorry, yes, yes. That, these are higher addresses. So the stack is growing this way. Stacks grow down from higher addresses towards lower addresses. What else do you know about the RSP? There's one more thing that you know about the RSP at this time. It is a multiple of Sixteen. It's a multiple of sixteen because stack frames are always aligned. Okay? So this is a multiple of sixteen. We're almost ready to call the function. I'm going to call the function now. So what instruction does the call to G correspond to? Does it correspond to red? Thank you, it corresponds to call. Um, so the call queue instruction, what does it do at a high level? It decrements the stack pointer by eight. It stores the return address, which is the address of the very next instruction in the stack space that it just created. And then it sets the instruction pointer to the called address. Okay, so. This is the entry RSP in G. Okay? Now you, so this is like the entry sequence. Um, if I were to continue through this entry sequence, one of the things that we might find in G is we might find G doing push Q RBP, move Q RSP RBP. If G was a complex function. If G was a very simple function that was using RPP as a general purpose register, it might not do this. Okay? But if G is a complex function, we'll get another RPP. And then if G has local variables, G will subtract a large number from RSP. It doesn't have to be large, right? But it'll subtract some number from RSP proportional to the amount of space that the compiler has decided to reserve. And then in the exit sequence, those things are undone in sort of like reverse order. So first we'll add a bunch of numbers, uh, add that number to RSP, and then we'll pop Q the old RBP, and then finally do a ret Q, which pops the return address off the stack and jumps to the corresponding address. Okay? So that at a high level is the function entry and exit sequence. So I have a feeling though that this isn't answering the question that you wanted to answer. Yeah, I guess the question was, so the like problem was about when which problem also, number is it? Uh, I um, I'll also describe it while I pull it out. It was about like the circumstances in which you can overwrite the return address. The circumstances in which you can overwrite the return address. Okay. So it was like storing like the first function argument in um, like on the stack, and so the question was, what does that argument have to be in order to overwrite the return address? And the answer was just that if the argument is too big, then it overflows and overwrites the return 
Yes. Sorry, I was confused by Okay. So um, let me now go into an example of a specific G, okay? And then that will show how a modification to a local variable in G can overwrite this return address. So let's say that G looked like this. I'm going to give G, you know, an argument, which is X, an int argument. Um, and I'm not going off the specific question because I still don't remember exactly what it was, but we'll do the, the high level overview. And let's say that I had a local variable called buffer in this function that consists of, I'm going to make it uh, 